Oh shoot, I ran out of video ideas. Ah, I don't have any ideas. I can already see my subscriber count dropping. Yeah, at Apple, we don't introduce interesting stuff at our keynotes, but we do introduce interesting stuff and great stuff randomly on our website. See? This is the brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let me just refresh the website. Ah, there we go. Now we can charge consumer even more money. Yes. Oh, thanks to that random Apple employee who just refreshed the website. Now I have some topics, so my subscriber account won't drop. Yes. Hi guys, if you don't know it already, Apple refreshed their website and released their long rumor 16 inch MacBook Pro on Wednesday. It's not a huge upgrade that we're expecting, but it's definitely an upgrade. This is a good example of Apple finally listening to consumers. Remember that the old 15 inch MacBook Pro? Well, it's crappy. It has a Radeon Pro. 555x and only 256 gigs of storage. That's clearly not enough for actual pros who had to edit tens or even hundreds of gigabytes of videos and photos. It also has a butterfly keyboard that sticks even if a single piece of dust got into the mechanism. It also has a very short key travel. It's weirdly sized arrow keys and the escape key and the touch bar is really unacceptable for actual professionals. It also has thermal issues because of its thin design, so therefore the CPU can never run at its max clock speed. But Apple finally listened to their consumers. They included a 16 inch retina display. By the way, this is not the largest ever display Apple has ever put in a MacBook because the short-lived 17-inch MacBook Pro is a thing, but it's definitely the largest ever retina display in a MacBook. It's 3072 by 1920 with a slightly higher pixel density of 226 ppi instead of 220 in the 15-inch model. It has the same P3 white color. 500 nits of brightness, and a true tone, and sadly, it still doesn't support HDR. But Apple did slim down the bezels, so it's only slightly larger than its 15-inch predecessor, and the same size as the original Retina MacBook Pro, surprisingly. Apple also allowed users to change the refresh rate of the display from as low as 47.95Hz to as high as 60Hz. Apple also switched back to the keyboard with the old Caesar mechanism, which Apple renamed the Magic Keyboard. Probably because it was influenced by the Magic Keyboard, the wireless one. Apple finally brought back the physical escape key, which many pros are asking for, and the inverted T arrow key arrangement. It's not entirely the same as the old one either, because it has only 1mm of key travel, but still an improvement from the old butterfly keyboard. Its keyboard is the perfect hybrid of the two keyboards. It combines the reliability and the clicky feeling of the Caesar mechanism, and the stability of the keys like the keycaps of the butterfly keyboard. So the new keyboard will be stable, reliable, and have a clicky feeling. Apple also claimed that they increased the airflow in the new MacBook Pro by 28%, and increased the size of the heatsink by 35%. This proved to solve the thermal issues the MacBook Pro faced for over 3 years. Apple also included a 100Wh battery. 
In a picture on Apple's website that showed the internals of the MacBook Pro, you can clearly see that there's room for a larger battery. But 100 watt hours is the largest capacity battery you can take on an airplane. Apple claimed that this bigger battery can give you an extra hour of battery life. Apple also upgraded the already good speaker. The speaker in the 15 inch MacBook Pro is incredible, but now it's a six speaker system that produces stereo sound. The dual force canceling woofers, I don't know if the, I pronounced that right, reduces system vibration for a clearer, more natural sound and deeper bass. Apple also included a new stream microphone array that records very good sounds. Apple claimed that I can record a podcast with it. I don't know if that's true, but it's good. But for some reason, the webcam is still 720p. Mm. The processor stayed the same. The 6 core i7 and the 8 core i9. The graphics are way better. Even in the base model, Radeon Pro 5300M with 4GB of GDDR6 VRAM. It had beaten the Vega 20, which is the maximum graphics you can get with the old 15 inch model. You can also go to 5500M with 4GB of GDDR6 for an extra 100 bucks and the 5500M with 8GB of GDDR6 for only $200 more. It's also configurable to a 64GB of 2665MHz DDR4 RAM, which unsurprisingly is still soldered to the board for $800 extra, which is an improvement over the 15 inches maximum RAM of 2400MHz 32GB DDR4. You can also get 8 terabytes of SSD storage for, well, the entire cost of the computer. But this is definitely good news for the pros because they need storage. And again, it's also started to the board. And because of these changes, the new MacBook Pro is 3 quarters of a millimeter thicker and 0.3 pound heavier. But I wouldn't mind because of how much better this computer is. But how about the cost? Well, it's $2,399 for the base model, which has a 2.6 GHz 6 core i7, Radeon Pro 5300M, 16 GB of 2666 MHz DDR4 RAM, and also 512 GB of SSD which is a big improvement over the 256GB in the base 15-inch model, so pros actually have room to store their stuff. So, this is all I can say about this new MacBook Pro. It's absolutely amazing to see that Apple actually listen to consumers this time. I'll probably visit the Apple Store and make a I review episode about it later. So thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the like button. Leave a positive comment, don't hit on me please, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video. Bye!